Ladies and gentlemen, boys, welcome to episode 76. Yeah, because last one was 75, and then we had the little bonus one that's not counted. So this is episode 76 of the Speared Sundays podcast. Thank you for tuning in. What do you, what do you, how was your weekend? Was it good? Huh? Did you, did, ah, uh, is Sunday, I suppose you're listening on Sunday morning. What are you doing later today? Huh? Sunday, are you going to church? You probably should. I bet your parents would like that. I bet, actually, does that really happen in Australia? I know it's much more of an American thing. I used to go to church for a little bit when I was, uh, how old was I? I decided to go to youth group when I was 14 or 15. I think I would have been about 15. It was when I was in high school. I'm pretty sure that I I, I went less for the reason that I wanted. I, it was like less to do with connecting with God and more to do with, I have no friends, I'm 15! <laughs> like, <laughs> I think that was the main motivation behind it. And it really worked. Because you know what? It, you have to be mates with when you're in youth group. Because if you don't, you're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, I've never had, uh, I mean, I figured out like, within about six months that it was all fake niceness. Like, it was like, you don't, you don't actually like me. You're just doing it because Jesus told you. You know when I discovered, this is when I discovered that uh, I'm, I'm on the fucking shitty couch. I'm at my girl's house and I'm on the fucking couch and then the table's too low. I'm going to sit on the floor. All right, let me get a pillow. All right, you know when I figured out that that this is such a shit podcast, it, like no uh, no other fucking audience would put up with. Oh, hang on, guys, I'm just gonna sit on the floor. Let me make a whole bunch of rearranging noises. I'm gonna move the microphone too, because I don't know. Fuck your ears. <laughs> All right, so this is when I figured out that that the, the whole. It's, it wasn't, okay, everyone who goes to church, generally, really nice person. I'm not shitting on religious people, alright? I'm just saying that it, a lot of it is fake. Not, I'm not saying that God's not real. What I'm saying is the, how people treat each other when they're at church is fake as hell. This is when I figured out that people were being nice to me so they could go and hang, kick it with Jesus up in heaven. I, <laughs> I remember what, what, how the youth group used to work, right? I would go, it was like 7 p.m. It was around the corner from my house. I just wanted to try it one time. I was like, hey, maybe this is for me. Because I was never raised in a religious background at all. My parents didn't push it on me. I was just like, hey, I'm going to try this out. I was just trying new shit. Um, so I tried out youth group. And I went to youth group and, and, and it was weird, man. Like as soon as I walked in, I walked in by myself. And, and everyone kind of noticed me but pretended not to. You know what I mean? You know when that happens when you walk into a new area where everybody knows each other and you just come in and everyone's like, outsider, outsider, we must assimilate him. <laughs> you know that shit, right? So that, that, that's what, what happened when I walked in. So I walked in and everybody noticed and then they started to do the whole fucking... I must be a shepherd and I'm going to make him feel welcome. And then, you know, maybe he'll keep coming back to church. And then when I die, God will be like, you know what, man? You did do a whole bunch of cocaine off a of stripper's tits while your wife was at home looking after the kids. But I tell you what, you got Lewis to come to youth group at, for about three months. So I'm going to let it slide. You're into heaven. Well done. Well done. And then you go out there and you kick it with Adolf Hitler and you're like, dude, how the fuck did you get in here? And he's like, I know, right? Isn't it crazy? I thought I'd be for going to hell for sure. Hey, where's Gandhi? <laughs> okay. What am I talking about? Yeah, youth group, right? So this is when I figured out that it was, um, this is what, ah, fuck. I just can't get over the fact that. I can't get out, get over the image of like Hitler being surprised to be in heaven. Like that's the funniest shit ever. Like imagine if he got there. Cause you know what? He'd be stoked, but everyone else would be like, dude, who the fuck let this guy in? Imagine Hitler like walking around heaven. Who would he meet? I mean, okay, obviously. So in this in this fantastical scenario, we're talking about the Christian heaven. So firstly. There's no Jews there, right? Because they got it wrong. They believed in the wrong God. So Hitler's, he's like, dude, 
I get to be in heaven and there is no juice? <laughs> this is amazing. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have nothing to talk about this week. So we're, we're going with Hitler in heaven, right? So he'd walk around and there'd be, I don't know, there'd be clouds and shit everywhere. He's like, dude, this is just like Auschwitz, except they're not poison. And then uh, he'd bump into Jesus and then and he'd be like, oh, Jesus, oh, I, I didn't know you were real. I thought you were, but this is cool. And then Jesus would be like, yo, what up, my bro, Adolf? Thanks for taking out all those Jews. I mean, they really, they, that fucking spear in the side, they crucified me. That shit sucked, man. <laughs> okay, we're getting out of this because it's just going to end up in the fucking news. Um, anyway, so I walk in the youth group, my first day, and, uh, and uh, there was, there was, look, I didn't know this at the time. Oh, look, we'll get into it later, right? I walk in and I'm, I'm just getting distracted. I, I haven't even, I've, the moment I've stepped in the door and then all of a sudden we're talking about fucking what Hitler would be like if he was in heaven, all right? So we're going to get through this story. I walk in the door of the youth group and then everyone kind of notices, oh, it's a new, it's a new, it's a new sheep for the herd. So they all start, uh, they don't talk to me because they're like, we can't weird him out. We can't be weird Christians. But ironically, by doing that, they started to be weird Christians. And you know what? They, they weren't that bad. You know what got me? It was that everyone, everyone was nice. Like, it's very rare where you walk into a situation and everyone is just like, we are nice. We like you. You know, because I'm very used to, pe- to a lot of people... Like, I'll walk into a room, and maybe two-thirds of the room will like me, and then the rest of them will just be thinking, Ah, here comes that cunt. (laughs) So when I walk into a room, and everyone likes me, it's either my show, or church. Uh, Even then, my show, I get a lot of people being like, Ah, you're a cunt, mate, but yeah, you're pretty funny. So, okay, so the only place I can walk in and be universally liked is church. So that immediately is setting off warning signs in my head. Even at 15, I was like, um, why is everyone being so nice? So we, I get in, and then we, then I, I didn't know what to do, right? I had never been to church in my life. Like, my parents didn't force it on me. I'd never read the Bible. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, I'm just going to do what everyone else is going to do. So you, you go in, and then, uh... What they do is they take you and, like, they're like, all right, everyone, it's time for some church. And everyone's like, woo, Jesus. And then you go and you line up in the pews. And I was just like, I'm just going to follow everyone else. And I just stood next to one guy, I don't know, who was like, I think the oldest person there was about, like, like well, well the, the dude running the joint was, like, 40. But then everyone else was probably the oldest was 25. That's once, once you hit 26, you're like, you're out of the youth group. Um, so you go and you stand in the pews and then they start singing songs and they start hanging out, handing out, uh, the, the lyrics, the songs, and I'm just holding it and I'm like, I just, I just don't want to sing. I didn't come here to sing. I I don't know why I came here. I came here to, to figure out what this thing was to see if maybe I liked a little bit of religion in my life and maybe to meet some new people. I didn't fucking come here to sing, right? So they give us these things, and then everyone's like, oh, 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 oh. hey, Jesus, oh, 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 don't steal shit, oh, 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 oh. behead gays. I mean, we don't believe that anymore, but it is it, it is still in the book, but we, I don't, we just treat it like a typo. No, nah, it's just a typo. It's a bit of an error, right? We'll ignore that bit until the rising of the... Uh, anyway. <laughs> so they, they just start singing. I'm just standing there. I'm like, I just, I don't want to sing. I don't know the words. They hand it on a projector. I'm like, dude, I didn't, I would never go to karaoke. You know what church is? It's just fucking karaoke, but you can only sing bad songs about one topic. <laughs> That's what it is, right? It, it, imagine if you went to a karaoke and they were like, all right, now it's time to sing a whole bunch of songs about Batman, and you're like, I didn't come here for that. I wanted to sing, you know, Highway to Hell or something like that. That'd be kind of, I mean, that's a, that's a banger. You know, I, I want to belt something out. I'm feeling a little bit, now we only do songs about Batman, all right? Ready? Batman. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't want to sing this song. Why is every song, that's what it's like. No, it's, it's, it, it, it's like that, but if they advertise it as something else. 
right? So, you, so this karaoke bar where you're only allowed to sing songs about Batman, imagine if the sign on the front said, if you come in here, uh, everyone's going to like you and you're going to paradise. I'm like, fuck, dude, paradise? That sounds mad. Everyone's going to be nice to me? Whoa, dude, that's sick. Oi, oi, we should go in, we should go in this bar. It says we get to go to, pa- really, paradise? Are you sure? I mean, that's what it says on the sign. Look at all the people going in. It's like most of the population are in this fucking bar. We should go in. All right, all right. And then you walk in and everyone's like, hey, Batman, Robin. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. (laughs) All right, so you sing the songs, yeah? And then uh, after that, I didn't sing any songs. And then they, they, oh, what did I do? I remember this. This is so fucking awkward. I'm just, I completely forgot that I did this. I remember, (laughs) dude, I'm cringing thinking about this. So you know how the collection plate comes around, right? I (laughs) had never experienced that before. So when you, if you go to a church, I assume they do it at not just Jesus churches. They hand out a collection plate. So they give you the plate and then you put some money in it and then uh, that's it, right? So, but I was sitting on the end of the pew. So I was next to the aisle. (laughs) <laughs> and so they do it while everyone's singing, right? So everyone's, I don't know, consumed by the Holy Ghost. So everyone's like, oh yeah, this is a banger tune. I'm going to put five bucks in the collection plate. And then the priest is going to spend it on little boys. Uh, <laughs> and then so, right, so they give you the plate. But I, I understood, okay, you guys are going to think I'm an idiot. But I understood what when you get the plate, If you don't want to put money into it, you just pass it to the next person, okay? I totally understood that. But the problem is, the the collection plate came to me, and I was the person on the end of the aisle. So, I had no one to pass it to. So, the guy who was sitting next to me passed it to me, and then I was on the aisle. So, I'm like, what do I do? I guess I'll just hold it, and then maybe... Because I was thinking that maybe every aisle has its own plate, which is stupid, but that's what I thought. So I'm just holding the fucking plate, and then um, then this guy comes up to me, and he starts pointing at the plate. So everyone's singing, right? So it's really loud, there's music, I can't hear what he's doing, but he starts pointing at the plate, really happy, like, hey, right there, the fucking plate. And I interpreted that as, put some money in the plate, man, you gotta do it for Jesus. And I had no money, right? I, I was 15, I went there, I didn't have a fucking wallet, I just went there in jeans and a t-shirt, and I think this guy's telling me to put money in the thing, and then I just said, you know, I kind of motioned, oh, sorry, I I can't, and then he starts more, like, (laughs) more urgently pointing at the plate, like, fucking plate, and then I I was like, dude, I don't have any, I was just, I started to get angry, and, and then I started to get angrier and angrier, and he started to point at the plate even more, and then I, and then I go, I don't have any money to put in the plate. I've only been here once, man. I'm not going to put money in. I don't even know if I want to be here. And then he goes, no, sorry. I just want you to pass me the plate so I can give it to the next aisle. (laughs) So within 10 minutes, I had fucking walked in. Everyone's like, oh, look at this new guy. Let's sing some songs. Wow, what an asshole. Like, I've just... Fucking classic me misinterpreted the situation and then let it overwhelm me and then I just got really angry and yelled at someone. That was my first impression. If I did that anywhere else, everyone would be like, all right, this guy's an asshole." But because we're in church, everyone's like, oh, we've got a little challenge. Let's try and fix this guy's life by getting him to read a book. Right? So anyway, so the, the songs are done. You sing like three or four songs and then the guy in the dress, the, the fucking, I don't know, the priest, bishop, I don't know what you call him. The dude in the dress with a cross on it goes and he stands up on the podium and he's got his fucking book that he's read a hundred times. And he starts reading out some other shit that everyone else has already heard before. And then he goes, comes up with some interpretation on it that, that's basically the equivalent of, remember when you were in, when, when you were in English class? And they told you to read a book. Like you had, you had standard educational reading. Everyone would read the book. And then you had to write an essay that was your interpretation of what the author wrote. And 
and it's just dumb. Like it's just like you have to you have to read the book, and basically the book goes, "Ah, oh, that chair is red," and then you got to interpret that to mean something different. Otherwise, you won't get good marks because the teacher's fucking bored of hearing the same fucking story. I would always write my essays. I'd be like, "Yeah, so I don't know." The fucking the author said that the chair was red, so it's red. I don't know, what do, you, what do you fucking want from me? And I bet the author would read that and be like, yeah, I said it was red, so it's fucking red. But the teacher would give me a three because, yeah, he might have said it was red, but he was implying that that, that meant, you know, the passion of the revolution, the color of red and love and lust and all this kind of shit. And I bet the author would read that and go, no, dude, it's just fucking red. That's how I interpreted the... The the sermon is what you call it, where the where the dude in the dress will get up and read his favorite book, and then everyone else will be like, "Oh, it's my favorite book as well." And then he'd be like, "Look, let's turn to page three hundred and five and read verse thirty two, and then God sitting up in heaven be like, "Dude, I didn't. What are you saying? Verses? I didn't write this thing with verses. It's just a book." And then he would interpret the verse, and then God would be like, "That's." That's that's not a verse. That's half of a paragraph. Read the rest. Read the rest. I explain myself. And then he just interprets on this half a paragraph that he calls a verse that was never meant to be a verse in the first place. And then everyone's like, wow, Bishop Peterson is so insightful. I'm not going to monitor him when he's around my kids. <laughs> anyway, so after the, the dude reads his favorite book, what what happened next? Oh, we would always eat together, <clears throat> like a like a I don't know, like a flock. But it was always like shitty pasta or anything like that. To be honest, I was just happy to talk to people my age. Um, so they would do that, and then we would fucking eat food and all that. And this anyway, I'm getting this dude. We're 17 minutes in. I haven't even gotten into how I found out that they're all fake. All right. So I, I used, I, I went, I think I went for about two months, but I'd never realized that people were just being nice so they could get into heaven until I started talking about comic books. Because man, that fucking tested them. I remember I was talking to this one dude that was older than me and, and when one, they were like the 25 year old people. I think I, I, th- I seem to feel, I got the feeling that how it worked was you started off at my age 15, right? And then once you hit 25, if you, if you were still going to the youth group, you were like king of the youth group. And this dude, he was like real good looking, real charismatic. He was, he was all Jesus the fuck up. Jesus the, the fuck up. I don't know whatever that means. And he had like a beautiful girlfriend and they were engaged. It was like, you looked at them and you were like, this is the perfect Christian couple. Oh my God. And then, I don't know, they'd probably go home and, and he'd fuck her in the ass. And then she'd be like, fuck me, daddy. And then they'd have threesomes and shit. <clears throat> I don't know. I bet there was something going along in, in the background. But when you're in youth group, you'd look at them and you'd be like, man, that's what Jesus wants me to be. I'm going to be that. I remember I was talking to this guy and he was actually quite nice. Um, but then I started telling, he's, he's like, so what are you into, man? And I was like, oh. I'm, I'm into like comic books. I usually go and I get comic books once a week and I, I really like reading them. He goes, oh, really, man? Um, I, it's like Batman stuff? I'm like, yeah, I like Batman and Robin. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, I like Robin. You know, that's really cool. I remember he used to wear the green tights. I was like, oh, well, that's actually, there's only just one Robin. There's actually five. And he goes, really, five? And then I started explaining how many Robins there have been and why Batman has gone through them for why he went from <clears throat> Dick Grayson to fucking Tim Drake and then to Damian Wayne and then he had a female Robin and then he had, uh, uh, what's his face, the guy that got beat by the crowbar, Jason Todd, him, okay? Dude, how can I remember all of these names of fucking how many Robins there have been, how they've died, how they've been res- resurrected, but I can't remember what a fucking airline is called. Dude, uh, there's something wrong with me. That's why I can't remember shit, because my brain is so packed full of useless fucking knowledge. Like, the only thing that I know is how to make people laugh. I know the business side of comedy, and then the rest of my brain is filled up with, like, 30,000 years of global politics in a science fiction universe that doesn't even fucking exist. (laughs) 
Anyway, so I started telling him about the Robins, and then I was and and you know when you you know when you start talking to someone and you start explaining a thing that you know heaps about, but then you you just dig yourself into a hole and you talk their face off, and you can see their expression try and remain and like an interested one, but you can just see that you're killing it. Like, you're just killing the vibe, talking about your thing that no one else gives a fuck about, and but you keep going anyway. That used to happen to me a lot, and then, I, then I've just figured that no one cares about what I like, so I just fucking read my little nerdy books at home, and then I just occasionally force it into the podcast every couple of weeks. So I got on, I got on to explaining about how Bruce Wayne died, and he's currently lost in time, and he's... he's uh, his third Robin, Tim Drake, is currently uh, Red Robin and thinks he's still alive, whereas Dick Grayson is currently pretending to be Batman so the city of Gotham stays safe, and Bruce Wayne is lost in time trying to fight his way back through different time periods because he keeps teleporting into them because Darkseid sent him back in time. <clears throat> And anyway, so I was doing that, and then he remained interested for way too long because he thought if he listened to this nerdy kid's fucking Batman history, he'll get into heaven with his beautiful girlfriend. And I think about a week or two after that, that's when I realized, oh, okay, no one's ever let me talk about the history of Batman and Robin for fucking ten minutes. I'm pretty sure this has more to do with Jesus than how interesting a storyteller I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I just stopped going. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. And then, then I just was just kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to try and be nice to people, and if Jesus doesn't like that, then I don't know. I mean, I've read your book, man. It wasn't that good. And anyway, how do I even know that... That Let's say, right, this is, this is my whole thought on the fucking religion thing, right? <clears throat> I feel like there is a creator... I feel like that there's, there, I, I feel like the, I, I believe in evolution, but I feel like that was put in place, like before the Big Bang, I feel like it was put in place by something that we can't even comprehend, right? Um, and, and that's the big point, like we can't fucking comprehend this thing that created the universe, it doesn't exist in our set of rules, um, and I've always thought that, let's say that this god did actually write a book, how do we know that it was the Bible? All right, let's say that it actually was the Bible, okay? Let's say that the Christian God is real, and he wrote the Bible, and then he gave it to somebody 2,000 years ago, and was like, yo, dude, spread the word, that'd be dope as fuck. And then the guy's like, yo, totally can, God, all right? That Bible doesn't exist anymore. Do you know what I mean? Because it's been changed that many times by so many different people. Like, the main Bible that we used that we use currently today in, in most Christian mainstream religion is called the King James Version. Doesn't that, when you read that, when you read that it's the King James Version, doesn't that set off fucking alarm bells in your head that say King James just changed some shit? Like, it says that it's the Word of God, yeah, but it's the King James version of the version of that God said. And King James probably got it. And it was fucking Damo from Down the Street's version of it. And when Damo got it, it was probably fucking Sarah the Prostitute's version of it after Jesus washed her feet. And then before she got it, I, you, you know what I'm saying, right? This whole thing, the, the Bible, even if it was like written by God or a, or a higher power... I don't think that's what it is anymore. So I'm just going to try and be nice to people. And then if there's fucking heaven, I hope, you know, Jesus is cool. Dude, I bet he skateboards, hey. I bet he can do like a, like a kickflip. He wouldn't be like, I reckon Jesus, he wouldn't be like a professional skateboarder. But I do think he would nail a kickflip. And maybe like an ollie. You know what I mean? Like those skateboarders, like he might skateboard to get somewhere just because he enjoys it, but he's not going to throw his life away on it. Like, you'd, you'd be like, hey, Jesus, meet me at the corner of fucking Smith and, and Michael Street. And he'd be like, yeah, no worries, dude. And then you'd drive there, but he would turn up in a skateboard, and, and, you'd, and you'd be with a girl that you're interested in, and she would see Jesus just slide in on a skateboard, and then 
do that thing where he jumps off it and then he runs a little bit and then he kicks the ground and then the skateboard jumps up and he grabs it with his hand all in like one smooth motion and then he goes what's up dudes and then you would just see the girl be like wow Jesus is so cool and he's like not even trying wow <laughs> then you're like fuck just lost my chance I knew I should have asked her out before I introduced her to Jesus I'm stealing my girl since year zero <laughs> All right, and with that, uh, it's time to uh, talk about the crowdfund. Holy shit, guys. Uh, I set up the crowdfund on Tuesday night. I was asking for $15,000 to cover half of what it would cost to produce the special, which is $30,000. Within three hours... You guys raised $15,000, the full amount, in three hours, which I've never seen happen before for a crowdfund. Uh, and then the next morning, it had jumped up to 20000 So then I was like, fuck, well, we're going to raise way over the budget because from, from everything that I've been reading with crowdfunds, you make like 20% of what you're going to make in the first week. Um. So I was like, well, shit, if this is going to get huge, I better add some stretch goals so I can just, you know, use the money wisely. So I added a stretch goal at 25000 to add in a new camera. And I'm recording this on Thursday at like 3 p.m. and we just passed it. So we're putting in, and now it's going to be five cameras instead of four, which is so great because I really wanted to do that, but we couldn't squeeze it into the original $30,000 budget. So we had to cut a camera, but now we have that in. How, how it's going to look is we've got two at the back on tripods, one in each corner of the theater. Then we'll have one up top on the balcony. And then we would have had one shoulder-mounted camera in the corner towards the front. And that guy would have to film me, film the crowd, jump on stage, get behind me when I'm doing physical bits. But now that we've added another camera on the other side towards the front with a stabilizer, he can fucking run all around with it and it'll look really smooth like it's on a crane so that was such a great thing to add thank you very much um and now the final goal is if we hit thirty thousand dollars which 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 i cannot even believe that that i'm that i'm that, it, that that's even possible do you know what i mean like like it ne like i knew that i could raise 15 grand because i know you guys have my back but never in a million years did I think that I would get it in three hours or even get more than that. I thought it would take like the whole month to raise the 15 grand because we have a month to raise money. But it's, it's just gone insane. So if we hit $30,000, I'm going to release a, a feature length documentary of how we got this made because I've been keeping like a visual di a, a video diary since before the crowdfund from like a year and six months ago of when I had the idea and when I was assembling in a team. I didn't really know what I was going to do with the footage. I, was, I just thought it would be something to, cool to look back on for me personally. But, you know, if I don't have to put all of my money into this special to get it filmed, I could just put a little bit of money into paying a camera person to follow me around whenever we're working on it. And that would be such a interesting and compelling documentary that, that I would really have liked to watch before I started this thing. Just, just so you have the evidence that it's possible. Do you know what I mean? I think that'd be really important for other independent artists, even if they're not comedians. So I would really like to get that done and it looks like it's going to happen. So if you want to pledge to the crowdfund, um, please do know that it's it's no longer a risky thing. It's 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 a pre-order. Really, what it is now is if you put money in, you're going to get a, a project that is definitely going to be finished and it's going to be even better than I thought it, it was going to be originally. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of other stretch goals. I have asked for input from you guys of other stretch goals of what I can do if I get even more money. But the overwhelming response is if you get more than $30,000, just keep it and make some money off this thing. Um... And that, to, that's the most surprising thing to hear from an online audience is, oh, we just want you to have some money. Don't give us anything, just you make money for once. And, and that, you know what? I was like, that'd be nice if, if, I, if I could do something and make a little bit of money out of it instead of coming back just to a, a little bit better off. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So if you'd like to pledge to the special, um, at this point, I don't mind how much you give. 
Um, just pick the coolest reward that appeals to you the most. I mean, if you put five bucks in, you're going to get the special. And to me, I, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to make a million dollars out of this thing. What I, that's not my main motivation. My main voted motivation is to get as many people as possible to see this thing. Like that is what I do this for, because I think this is going to be so, so good. And I just want you guys, I just want you to see it. If you're listening, I just want you to see it. And if you like the podcast, if you like my videos, I know you're going to like this even more. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. It was, it was funny. I've been reading a bunch of comments now that I've raised, uh, 25,000. I got a text from my brother being like, dude, 25,000. That's so much fucking money. You're making heaps of money. And I'm like, no, no, I have, I've just broken even. That's what that means. If I raise $25,000, that means in reality, I actually have just hit the zero point. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. That's amazing. But all these people are looking at it, being like, dude, you've made so much money, you're, you, you're fucking rich. No, I'm not. I'm at zero. Now, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not in debt. That's, that's all that, that we have achieved so far. I mean, we're going to make this amazing thing, but, but profit-wise, the only thing that we've achieved is that now I'm not going to be in a hole for a long time, and I'm going to be able to still you know, buy food and maybe a t-shirt every couple weeks. <laughs> it's, it's just funny. With the with the the reaction that I'm getting from like friends and family and and commenters being like fuck you you're making so much money like cunt I'm from breaking even <laughs> you know I to I told you like it couldn't be any clearer I told you it's going to cost thirty grand and uh, we have we have almost made thirty grand so really I'm I'm almost about to break even but yeah so thank you very much guys I am still going to have a think about stretch goals and if there are some things that I can think about to make the production better or to make the rewards better. Um, I, I, I might, I might add it in if it's, if it's worth it, but, um, otherwise I really just want you guys to see it. And what would be really cool is if this could be the biggest crowd fun ever. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm for a comedy special. I mean, dude, actually, what is the biggest crowd fund ever for a stand up comedy special? I'm going to look it up. Biggest crowd fun ever. All right, let's look it up. How are we going to look here? Oh, now I don't want to be... <laughs> now I actually don't want to be the, the winner. All right, so I've just looked up the biggest comedy special crowdfund ever. And the... Oh, man. It's a Kickstarter and the, the their headline is... Comedian dying of cancer hopes to make stand-up special. And he, he raised $50,000 uh, a couple of years ago. And you know what? You know, I don't, I don't want to beat that guy. I don't want to take that from him. I don't want... Like, I, I, was, I was thinking, oh, man, it would be cool to have the biggest comedy special crowd fun ever. Maybe I could find out who wins and then be like, we've got to beat this guy. It'd be like it'd be like the shittier, no, the more impressive version of the the um, me beating that guy in the crochet hat. Except we can't do this now. Okay, look, let's let's raise. If he he raised fifty thousand, let's raise forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. But no, nothing over that. All right, I do not want to beat the guy who raised money because he wants to do a cool thing before he died. All right, let's not. And that's like kicking the shit out of a Make-A-Wish kid. You know? And just let him meet John Cena. You don't have to bash him. <laughs> so, yeah, look. Okay, I don't want to be the biggest in the world, but it would be nice if lots of people saw it, basically. Um, also, speaking of that, um, me being the spokesperson for that charity, obviously that really speaks volumes about how little you guys give a fuck about famine. Because I raised $120 for starving kids in need of education. So here's me going, hey, let's save the children. Let's, let's end poverty and educate people to help people stop dying. And all of you guys are like, now nah, fuck that. Tell some jokes and I'll give you some money. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate any, any amount you can pledge to the, to the crowdfund. And I'm, I, like, honestly, all jokes aside, I am so... I'm so grateful for you, the listener. Um, 
and to anyone who has pledged so far and to the person who's about to, thank you so much. Oh, if you have pledged and you want to help the thing get bigger and, and better, um, Indiegogo has these really cool sharing tools. So if you log into your Indiegogo account next to the, the, the pledge button, they have like social media icons. And if you click them and share it, and then people who see it, if they, if those people see your link and click on it and then uh, pledge to it, I can actually see who has raised the most money from sharing, which is really fucking cool, right? Um, so basically, I'm going to come up with a prize for whoever shares the and whoever raises the most money through referrals. I think is how they call it. So yeah, that's a thing. Also, we're the, we're the number one featured crowdfund on Indiegogo, the website, which is crazy. So. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about it. Pledge to it if you want. I, th I, I really, I, I really think it's going to be good, and I would love for as many people as possible to see this. And um, you know me, if I if I do make money out of this thing, I'm only going to throw it back into the hole and make something better. Um, as as evidenced, as after I finished this year's tour, I could have bought a car and taught myself how to drive, but then I was like, no, I'm going to do a special. So, you know, hey, maybe I can, maybe, maybe if this goes well enough, I could fucking learn how to drive and stop getting everyone to pick me up. But then I have to do shit for myself, wouldn't I? Who wants to do that? All right, let's get into it. I'm sorry. I put it off for as long as possible. I don't, I don't want to do this. It's time to turn it off. Turn off the podcast. Stop listening. Stop listening. This is your warning. It's time to stop because the worst part of the worst podcast in the world is about to begin. It's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. All right. So this part of the podcast is where I answer questions sent in. I uh, I don't I don't I don't answer questions about me because uh, I talk about me the whole thing. It's really a nice thing to just give you guys life advice that is probably fucking wrong. All right. So if you want to send in a question, if you have a dilemma, if you've had. I don't know, you, you guys know what the questions I get. If you have a dilemma about something, send an email to podcast at lewspears.com. That is podcast at lewspears.com. I said podcast at lewspears.com, right? Send an email, make sure you summarize it in the, in the header. Uh, clickbait me, but don't, just make sure it's accurate. Otherwise, I'll just fucking delete it. Um, so yeah, let's get into the first one. This one is an update email. My favorite kind of emails, all right? If I ever give you life advice, if I've ever given it to you before and, and you've changed something, send me an update. I love fucking hearing them. It's the best shit ever, all right? So we've got an update on last week's question. You guys are, you guys are quick with the... I think you guys are trusting me too readily. You guys are being really quick recently with the actions after my advice. Uh, last week, I told a guy how to break up with a girl, and he did it within 20 minutes. Oh no, two weeks ago I did that. Now, last week I told a guy some advice, and he's gotten back to me this week. So, update. Dating good friend's ex, and he doesn't know about it. Oh, I remember this. So, last week a guy emailed in, and he was friends with a girl, um, and they were really good friends, and then he introduced her to his friend. His friend and the girl started dating, and then that's when he realized, and the girl realized, that they had feelings for each other. So she dumped his friend, and now they, the original two people are dating, and he didn't know how to tell his mate. I think I told him that you just need to do it to his face, is basically what I got to, in a public area. And so here's the update. Hey Lou, here's an update from what happened between me and Brian. I decided to follow your advice and meet him face to face. I bought him a drink from the cafe we usually meet at a lot of the time. Cafe boys, yeah, that's a great idea. If you're gonna, if you're ever in gonna be in like a hostile situation, do it in a public place. Don't go there. Like I imagine this is this is the best way to get out of an abusive relationship is to just do it in the fucking I don't know the the vegetable section of the supermarket. I'm sick of you beating me with a fucking paddle. Well, then maybe you shouldn't interrupt me while I'm playing ping pong. And then someone's like, shh, I'm trying to buy lettuce. That's how I imagined it would go. Anyway, <laughs> I sat him down and began saying that I've been a cunt of a friend. I said I just wanted to be completely honest with you and do it face to face. I began telling him everything that had happened between me and Bella. 
As he was listening, I could see him filling with more and more anger, and I was pretty sure he was re getting ready to king hit me. Our drinks then came out, and he said, thanks for buying me a drink, dude, and then walked away. Oh, what a gentleman. What a fucking gentleman. He just ethered you. He just like, yeah, this is a horrible thing that's happened to me. Goodbye. As he walked away, he turned his back and shouted at me. Oh, here we go. He turned his back and shouted at me. If that's what you both want, then that's fine by me. <laughs> and then walked out the door. And then the cafe person was like, hey, hey, you can't take the glass with you. Bring, you, ha you have to bring the glass back. And then he would have walked back in and drunk it. And then you would have stood there in silence. I don't know. I'm making this up. Um, he, uh, if that what you want, it's fine by me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I felt like a really shit person right now, and I deserve to feel this way. He texts Bella after we met and simply messaged her, fuck you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think it's safe to say that I've burnt a bridge with a mate. I don't know whether to message him or just leave him alone. At this point, I don't even care about our friendship because that's over, but I just need to know if he's mentally okay. Can't wait for your announcement. Have a shit one from Nick. Um, yeah, I look, Nick. You got to leave him alone. I would say because uh, the I would I would say I'd probably be worried about his mental health at the moment as well. But the last thing he needs to to hear, the last person he needs to hear from is you. I think or her. I would just let him get over it. That's what. That's the that's the best way to get over a relationship is just distance. You know, you, you know when you see those couples that, that they can't break up, like they'll keep having huge fights, one of them will cheat on the other one, and then they'll keep getting back together, but every time, every time they do that, their relationship gets worse and worse because they're just putting band-aids on like a massive scar, and they just can't break up because they can't fucking leave each other alone, and then one day one of them will go, oh, I'm breaking up with you, and the other one will fucking come to their house, and you, you know those relationships where they just, they, they never end because... When one person wants to break up, the other person doesn't want to, or and then those will switch, and then every time both of them, one of them just ends up caving to the other, and then the cycle continues, that kind of shit. You don't need to do that to your mate. I think, um, just let it go, man. I think you've, you've, uh, I, I don't know if you've, you, you, you yeah, look, you, at the end of the day, you fucked up this friendship, but you... Hopefully something good will come out of it. At the end of the day, in in the long run, run it is a positive thing because while you may have ruined your friendship with this guy, um, you're also saving him from being in a relationship with a girl who doesn't like him and actually likes you, which is a great fucking thing. Like he'll look look back on five years time and be like, yeah, thank fuck I didn't stay with her. Um, but yeah, I would just leave him alone, man. I don't think that you can save this friendship. Just let him be, let him figure it out. If you have mutual friends, let them know that they should check on him. But that's kind of all you, all you can really do. Just let him have his hurt feelings and I don't know, maybe he'll come back to you and he'll be like, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. Or maybe you'll never hear from him again. Either way, just enjoy your relationship with, uh, Bella and work on, yourselves don't worry about this other guy because you know what at the end of the day it's probably better that he's not in your life because if he comes back in and you're still friends you're just going to be rubbing your relationship in his face without even fucking trying to so yeah i would just let him be all right cool thanks for the email thanks for the update now this one i'm very excited about this is a this is a good email all right because the headline is i learned japanese for hentai. Oh, we're about to speak to a fucking legend. All right, let's have a look at his email. I'm not going to read out the full email. It's a few email email numbers and letters in here, but the the core of the email uh, is Night Spark. So look, let let's go Night Spark. All right, get out, you skinny cunt. My name's Jake. No, it's not Jake. It's fucking Night Spark. All right, it's Night Spark, and you know it. All right, let's. I want to talk to Night Spark because anyone who's learning Japanese for hentai. They really you should change your name by deed poll to fucking Night Spark, all right? My name is Night Spark and I've got a story to tell you. A few years ago, I started teaching myself Japanese, not because I wanted to travel or learn the culture, but because I wanted to enjoy my hentai. Oh, this is a man who knows what he's want. Knows what he wants. 
In particular, there was this game that was released that was essentially a porn game disguised as a Japanese role-playing game. This guy online was translating it, but it was taking a bloody long time. So I did what any rational weeb would do and said, fuck it, I'm learning Japanese myself. <laughs> Man, dude, the, the power of the dick. That's all that I get from that paragraph is the power of the man. Not the man, all right? This has nothing to do with Night Spark. This is Night Spark's dick just taking control and being like, you know what? I am sick of waiting for translations. I am going to jack off to anime babes, fucking dragons, and I'm going to understand them in real time. Fuck subtitles. And then his dick just fucking grew propellers and started taking Night Spark to Japanese classes. The funny thing is, ever since I started learning in grade 12, I was putting off my schoolwork, uh, barely passing classes, all because I was so bloody determined to play my shitty weeaboo hentai games. Believe it or not, it took me a few years, but I persevered and I am now actually semi-fluent in Japanese. What a fucking legend. This dude learned another language. Another language to watch porn. I would never I would never learn another language to enjoy something else. But you know what? If the only way I could watch porn is by learning another language, I would probably learn that shit too. Like that's fucking amazing. The power of the dick. Congratulations, Night Spark. You learned a whole nother language so you could jerk off to fucking anime girls. Next thing you know, he's going to learn how to draw hentai so he can make his own. And he'll, he'll, he'll be like, it'll be like Night Spark Productions. And all he will make is like broken Japanese half-fluent hentai. <laughs> Alright, now I'm semi-fluent in Japanese. The game I wanted to play was initially released in 2013. But now part 2 has just been released and I can finally enjoy my hentai without waiting. So was it worth it? Fuck no. But at least I can drown my regret in anime titties. <laughs> but in all honesty, I would rather have to deal with untranslated hentai than miscellaneous bit the end. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed my story. Have a shit one. Oh, what a fucking legend Night Spark is. He learned a whole nother language so he could watch weirdo porn. That's just great. I'm proud of you, bro. That's amazing. The, the power of the dick. That's all that that comes down to. All right. We've got one more question, and then I'm going to wrap up the podcast. Here we go. Doing three, this podcast. Ah, oh, well, one was an update, so I like to get two questions in. All right. Where are we? Sorry, I'm just getting my emails up. I'm a little bit disorganized today because I'm not at home. Uh, where are we? My friend won't accept my girlfriend. Ooh, this is a good one. All right. Hi, my name is Megan. Oh, lesbians! <laughs> All right. Now I'm interested. Fuck, mate, you know what? This would make me learn Japanese. If this whole email was in Japanese, I'd fucking, I'd join Night Spark Productions. Hi, uh, my name's Megan. Basically, I'm in year 12. I hope you're 18, because I just yelled about you being a lesbian. Um, I'm in year 12, and I've been dating my girlfriend, Christy, for nearly a year, half a year. So six months. Things have been going really well in our relationship. However, our biggest issue is that one of my friends, and I use that term loosely, ah, oh, just girls, just, why can't girls just not like each other? We do that so well. Like, what do you mean? One of my friends, and I use that term loosely, not your friend. I guarantee you, I haven't read this email, I guarantee you I'm going to get to the bottom of this, and this person that you call your friend is going to be a complete cunt and there's no reason for you to have them in your life. I guarantee you. Why do girls do that shit? So many times I'll be with my girlfriend and we're like, and she'll be like, hey, let's go to this person's party. I'm like, you hate that person. Yeah, but you know, she invited me and she's my friend. No, she's not. You hate her. Anyway. Uh, what are we? Alright, so, uh, our biggest issue is that one of my friends, and I use that term loosely, has an issue with us dating. What, is she homophobic or something? She's never brought up this issue with me personally, and her issue is mainly in that I am closer with my girlfriend than her. She's been bitching about my girlfriend to other friends of ours. So she's, oh, so she's angry 
because you're closer to your girlfriend than you are to her. Well, of course you're closer to your girlfriend. You've got your tongue in her pussy. Like, what What does she want? Like, that's, like, wh- what does she expect? That she, that, that, sh- that you're going to fucking rim your girlfriend and then be like, yeah, but I like my platonic friend a little bit better. No. No way, all right? Dude, fucking Megan is hanging out, scissoring her girlfriend, and then this other bitch thinks that she's entitled, like she's, like, conversations with her can compare with some fucking bang-on scissoring. No one is that good at talking, all right? Nobody is that cool to hang out with that they are better than having your fucking tongue in your girlfriend's pussy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that's what you're going to have to tell her. If she ever is like, why do you spend more time with your girlfriend than you do with me? Because she puts fingers in me, bitch. And that feels way better than hanging out and playing lacrosse with you. (laughs) Oh, man. What a shit friend you have. All right, we're not even halfway through. All right. Uh... Blah, blah, blah. She's been bitching about my girlfriend to other friends of ours. I find it stupid and she's annoyed about me being closer to my girlfriend than her when before all of this, she was already starting to stop talking to me before my girlfriend and I were together. What does she expect? Ah, so she's just doing the whole fucking jealous thing where she throws you away and then as soon as you you start hanging out with someone else, she's oh, I thought I was so cool. I thought you were going to chase me. She's doing that. Is she gay as well? Or is... It doesn't seem like... Oh, maybe we'll find out at the end of the email. Maybe she's... Maybe she's gay as well and she wants to be your girlfriend. I'm kind of getting those vibes. Why would she hate your... Like, why would she hate your girlfriend if... If she didn't also want to be with you? I don't know. Maybe you're like the hottest lesbian out. Um... Honestly, this friend of mine has been extremely rude and if my girlfriend even tries to speak to her, she will yell at her and cry. Yeah, it sounds like she wants... Sounds like she's jealous. My main issue is that last year she was friends with my girlfriend before we were together and now she seems to hate her. Which is frustrating as my girlfriend did nothing wrong. My friends say that this friend has told them that she thinks Christy has stolen me from her. Ah, you're dealing with a fucking cunt. Like, this this is just a shit human. They can't... She can't be happy... You know, maybe she's not gay, right? Maybe she doesn't want to be with you, but maybe she's just jealous that you're in a good relationship and and she's not. This really belong this really annoys me because I never belonged to her and my girlfriend didn't steal me away. I was the first to tell her my feelings. This friend of mine is making our relationship strain as we feel like we can't be ourselves when she's around. I want to bring up this issue with my friend, but I don't know how. If I want to save the f- and, oh, but I don't know if I want to save the friendship with her, but I just don't want her to cry because I'm so sick of her crying. I know I sound like a cunt, but it's ridiculous. You do. You don't sound. Like, you don't sound like a cunt at all. Your friend sounds like a cunt. So how should I ask her why she's been treating Christy like this? Thanks, cunt. Have a shit one. Yeah, Megan. It sounds like your your friend is is just an asshole. Um. And it also sounds like that you don't want to be friends with her. So I don't know why you're trying to preserve this relationship. Sounds like you're really happy with your girlfriend and your girlfriend's happy with you and your girlfriend doesn't want to be friends with this person either. So just drop her. I, I, I suppose you guys are in the same school, so it's a little bit harder. But yeah, look, I would, I, would, I would bring it up with her. I would bring it up with her face to face because it sounds like she's just being insane um, and, and, and when people act like that and you bring it up to their face, not in an aggressive way, like you bring it up in a reasonable way, like you would just say something like, Hey, so I've been talking to my other friends and, um, they say that you feel like my girlfriend has stolen me from you. And I just wanted to figure out what's going on. Like, are you, are you unhappy that I'm in a relationship or, you know, I, 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 I like I was getting vibes that you didn't want to be my friend anyway. But as soon as I started dating this person, you, you started to get really angry. Also, I think that's really rude how you're treating my girlfriend. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, like it just—it sounds like you're a very reasonable person. Your girlfriend, you and your girlfriend haven't done anything wrong. So either your friend is jealous and she might be gay and she wants you or, 
or she's just an asshole. Like I can't really, I can't really think of why else she would just she would be so rude to your girlfriend, other than her being a jealous person, e- even with her friends. So yeah, I, I would bring it up. I would bring it up um, to her and and just ask her, do you have a? Are, are you? Why are you so angry about me being in a relationship? I'm sorry if it feels like I'm abandoning you, but you know, you're being really rude to my girlfriend. And if she responds like a psycho, then just be like, yeah, look, okay, you're right. I don't want to be friends with you. I'm sorry. And don't say it in a mean way. Just say, hey, I think, I think it's better if we're not friends. Um, I'll still see you at places and I won't be mean to you, but I think that maybe we should just stop hanging out and then go home and fucking dive into your girlfriend's pussy and have a great night. Like, 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 like I, I, I feel like there's, there's no real dilemma here. Go, go hang out with your girlfriend, have a cool relationship, see the movies, you know, and then fucking drop this other chick. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would bring it up to her. I would really love an update on this, Megan. Um, let me know how this goes. Uh, I would love to hear how it goes. Whatever you decide to do, let me know and send in another email. And uh, yeah, good luck with it all. But it sounds like your friend's just an asshole. So yeah. All right, guys, that's the end of the podcast. I would just like to say once again, thank you so much for everyone's support and for everyone who is about to. Um, please do check out my Indiegogo campaign. Um, now that it's funded, uh, just treat it like a pre-order. Like if you want to get this special, because because basically the way that I see this, right, I would love for this special to get on Netflix or something uh, like that or, or to, to go somewhere else. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely putting it on my website as a download, but I would love to have it somewhere else as well. Do you know what I mean? So I'd love to pitch it to Netflix and 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 what would really make the the pitch strong is if I could go to Netflix and be like, hey, look, all of these people, you know, pledged fifty thousand dollars to this special. Obviously, lots of people want it, and my comedy resonates with people. You should put it on your platform. That works so much better than, hey, I raised twenty five grand, and and then when it comes out, then I pitch it to them. Do you know what I mean? Like it would be great to pitch it to Netflix before it's even released. And, and, and be able to show them how much money I have raised. Because, um, you know, that's that's what business people understand. They see fucking money, whereas they wouldn't be able to... Whereas if, if I crowdfunded... Say I don't raise any more money from now. Say I raise it's 25000 and that's all that I raise. Say I pitch it to Netflix. I'm like, oh, we've raised 25000 like, Yeah, that's a lot of money for you, but that's fucking nothing to us. That's not very impressive. But then when it actually comes out, and then, I don't know, maybe I sell... 100,000 copies, then they'll be like, oh shit, we should have put it on our platform, but now it's too late, it's already out. It it works so much better if I raise 50,000 now, and all of the people who are going to, like all of the people who are thinking about buying it when it comes out, basically what I'm saying is, it'd be great if you just pledge now and treat it as as a pre-order. That would really help me, and then maybe we could do something crazy like get it on Netflix. But um, yeah, that's my plan, guys. Anyway, check out the rewards, there's a bunch of them left, um, and I would really also like to hit this stretch goal. So yeah, thank you very much to everyone who's been pledging and listening to the podcast and sharing it around also really helps. Um, And I will speak to you next Sunday. Thank you very much. I am in a very good place right now and I'm just absolutely fucking grateful for you and your support. That being said, I still want every one of you to have an incredibly shit one.